Delaware Tech, Chemistry 100 only, Unit 6 continued, Solving Gas Law Problems. So shown here are a list of the four gas laws, Boyle's Law, Charles's Law, Gay-Lussac's Law, also known as Amentin's Law, and Avogadro's Law, as well as uh, two more laws that combine several of the other laws together. The combined gas law includes the first three laws all in one formula, and the ideal gas law combines all four of the gas laws. Now, in Chem 100, you are only responsible for Boyle's Law on exams, and Boyle's Law and Charles's Law on the lab. So we're not going to go over the others, but I want you to notice the formula under equation in the last row, ideal gas law. P1V1 over N1T1 equals P2V2 over N2T2. Forget the equals to R for, you, for your purposes, you won't use it. But that formula, if you, if you allow certain factors to be constant, like the two Ns, then you can cancel the Ns. And if you have a constant temperature, you can cancel the two Ts, and you will be left with Boyle's Law up above, P1V1 equals P2V2. Likewise, if you take that same ideal gas law and, and do it under situations where the N and P are constant, they cancel, and you're left with Charles's Law, V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. So you're going to use these two formulas when the other two variables, the other two parameters, are kept constant, and the only thing you're changing are the two that are in the actual formula. So let's look at some possible problems and decide which formula you're going to use. What is the total pressure in a balloon filled with 170 millimeters of mercury, that's the pressure, of oxygen, and 620 millimeters of mercury of nitrogen? So the total pressure. So you're given a partial pressure of two gases, and you're asked for total pressure. Well, that would be Dalton's law of partial pressures, where you're just adding the two partial pressures. It wasn't the one, it wasn't one of the ones listed in the previous slide, but it is one you're responsible for. The second problem says, I have 5.6 liters of gas at 1.5 atmospheres, okay? So you're given a volume and a pressure, and you're told it's a sealed piston. So sealed tells you the number is constant. If I increase the pressure to 3.4 atmospheres, what is the new volume? And it doesn't say it, but we're going to assume the temperature is constant as well. So the only thing we're changing are volume and pressure. That is Boyle's Law. Number three says a balloon has a pressure of 1.05 atmospheres, a volume of 34.2 liters, and a temperature of 25 degrees C. If P remains constant and T drops to minus 20 degrees C, what is my new volume? So P is constant. And it's a balloon, so it has to be sealed, so the N is constant. So the only thing we're looking at here are the volume and the temperature. The pressure isn't changing at all. So that was in there as a red herring. So you would have to change your temperature into Kelvin, do your equation in Kelvin, and then eventually uh, 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 solve the equation. But all of your temperatures must be in Kelvin to do it. The 25 degrees and the minus 20 have to be turned into Kelvin first. But the point here is the only thing varying in this problem is the volume and the temperature, and that tells you it's Charles's law. And the other two are uh, versions of gas laws that you're not responsible for, so I'm going to skip those and go right to another example of a Boyle's Law problem. You've already seen a couple examples. Here's another one. A sealed isothermal piston. Okay, you've already been told several things. Sealed. The N is constant. Isothermal. The temperature is constant. Piston. The other things can change. The volume and pressure can change. So let's make our table to solve our problem. We have initial condition, a final condition. Pressure and volume are the only things that are changing. We know that N1 is the same as N2 because it says sealed. We know T1 equals T2 because it says isothermal. We start with a volume of 2.45 liters. Sorry, I'll make the decimal a little bigger. And we start with a pressure of 7.65 atmospheres. We are increase, I'm sorry, we're decreasing the pressure to 2.39 atmospheres. So if we're decreasing the pressure, we expect volume 2 to go up. 
Remember, these are inversely proportional. And now we can use our equation. And, I'm, and I apologize for having this overlap with it, but I'll, I'll write it over. I'll write it down at the bottom here. V2 equals P1 V1 over P2. And at this point, we can plug in our, our, our various numbers. And what we get is a answer. I'm going to erase that so it's not cluttering up the notes here. And we get the volume has increased, as expected, to 7.84 liters. We're rounding it to three significant figures since uh, the lowest number of sig figs in the problem, actually all of them are three sig figs. So the lowest one of those is three sig figs. So we round to our final answer of 7.84 liters. And again, this makes sense. What have we done? We've dropped our pressure almost threefold, actually probably a little more than threefold, so we expect our volume to go up threefold, and that is exactly what happened. And we'll stop here.